try to bring you the best. I try to bring you the best. Amen. Dr. Joel Wallach's work has resulted in the publication of more than 70 peer review and, and, and uh, ref referred journal articles in the fields of nutrition and pharmaceutical research. He promotes worldwide health, beauty, and youthful energy. And for more than 40 years, it has been Dr. Wallach's mission to bring accurate and timely health information to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to stand to your feet and welcome our speaker for the next couple of nights as he takes us on a journey to achieving the health that we want. Please welcome Dr. Joel Wallach as he comes at this time. Oh, thank you, Pastor Dollar and Pastor Taffy and his whole crew. They've been so wonderful. Really appreciate the help that everybody's given. And uh, I have to thank the greatest physician of all, right, who has always been, who is, and who will ever be the greatest physician, our Lord Jesus. And we love him forever. And I know he loves us forever. We're going to start out with high blood pressure. High blood pressure is not genetic. And I'm going to say this to the different points of the compass because I know it's kind of a shock. Uh, high blood pressure is not genetic. High blood pressure is not genetic. High blood pressure is a simple mineral deficiency disease that can afflict anybody. Simple mineral deficiency disease. You supplement with the minerals, you don't get it. If you don't supplement with the minerals, you do get high blood pressure. And if you supplement with minerals, it goes away. It's just that simple. High blood pressure medication can lower blood pressure, but it doesn't solve the problem that caused the high blood pressure. You can symptomatically reduce high blood pressure, but you're still going to die from the complications of high blood pressure, even if though your blood pressure is, quote, under control, unquote. So once you appreciate that, you're going to add 25 to 50 healthful years to your life. And salt, everybody wants to uh, tell you that salt is a bad thing. Salt uh, is somehow related to high blood pressure. Wh whether you believe it or not, how many of you have heard that salt has something to do with high blood pressure? Okay, good. We've all heard that. Well, the first thing that a good farmer puts out for his livestock is a big salt block, right? And there's nobody out in the pasture telling a cow she's limited to one lick a day, is there? And so I refuse to believe my human patients are dumber than a cow. So I said, look, go ahead and just salt your food to taste. Don't worry about it. And people will say, well, every time I use salt, I swell up. My ankles get all fat, you know, and swollen. And I, uh, I get worried about that. Well, when you swell up, when you get edema in your ankles and your face and your hands, um, when you use salt, that means that you have a low blood protein. You eat four to six eggs every day, and within two weeks, you can salt your food with impu impunity, and you won't swell up anymore. You raise that blood protein up. People say to me, well, I can't eat eggs because my doctor said I've got to worry about cholesterol. We're going to cover that in a minute. Now, I love this, this story. This fellow here, 88 years old, and this is published in the New England Journal of Medicine, one of the most prestigious medical journals. This old dude is 88 years old. He eats 25 eggs a day. Now, why would this old dude in, in 1991 be eating 25 eggs a day? Well, the reason is, I mean, you have to ask yourself, I mean, maybe he ate 25 eggs a day because he didn't have any teeth and couldn't eat steaks anymore. <laughs> or maybe he owned an egg ranch and, you know, was, was quality checking his product. <laughs> but the reality is, when you read that scientific article, the more eggs he ate, the, the, he realized he became more studly. <laughs> he became more studly the more eggs he ate because testosterone is 95% by weight cholesterol. So when you go on a cholesterol restricted diet and you go from cream and butter and eggs and lard to margarine and cooking oils and you take drugs to lower your cholesterol, there's nobody home. So ladies, <laughs> if you want your man to be studly, six to ten eggs a day. Now they cannot be fried, 
They can be soft poached, they can be soft boiled, they can be soft scrambled in butter, not margarine or oils. And I can tell you from personal experience, I'm 71 years old and 10 eggs a day works. <laughs> Hoo -ah! <laughs> See now, the ladies, gentlemen, the ladies understand what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, and that little box down there in the middle, uh, this was actually the same study I just showed you on salt. That particular study was actually a government study called the Sodium Task Force. They said uh, medical doctors want you to get your salt intake to one gram a day, which is kind of like a half a teaspoon of salt a day. And if you do that, it increases your risk of dying of a heart attack by 600%. By following the doctor's advice, it increases your risk of death from a heart attack by 600%. If you defy your doctor and take double and triple the dose of salt that they're recommending, you actually live 25 years longer and don't die of a heart attack. Isn't that amazing? Okay, that's a government study. Okay, next. Again, for those of you who weren't here last night, uh, this is a big study um, published in February of 1999 in Scientific American. Uh, Scientific American sent a group of uh, um, genetic and DNA scholars to Nigeria they went out into the forest of Nigeria, and their task was to find one black tribesman who had normal genes for blood pressure. They were going to take his blood and genetically engineer him and make a vaccine and come back to America and inject every black man with his vaccine to get everybody's blood pressure down to normal. When they got to Nigeria, they were shocked to find out that only 7% of the people in Nigeria had high blood pressure, 93% were normal. They were just shocked because in Chicago, the number or the percentage of people who had high blood pressure who had a genetic relationship to Nigeria from the old slave days, 33% had high blood pressure in Chicago, but only 7% in Nigeria. And that tells you immediately that it's not genetic because your position on earth doesn't determine how a genetic disease will manifest itself. So if it was genetic, it would be 7% in Nigeria and 7% in America. Or if it was genetic, it would be 33% in Chicago and 33% in Nigeria. But the fact that this big disparity tells you immediately it's not genetic. So what was the difference? Why, why these people in Nigeria were protected? Well, because they actually were primitive. They had no electricity, and so they still used wood for fuel to heat in their homes and, and cook their food. They would take the wood ashes and use that as a fertilizer, and wood ashes is a misnomer because the, the stuff that's left when you burn wood for fuel is not really ashes, it's the minerals that the tree had picked up out of the ground. You burn the, the carbon, <coughs> and these minerals are put into the gardens. The okra and the sweet potatoes and the onions and the tomatoes and corn take up these minerals. You eat those foods, you get the minerals in that fashion. Well, how many of you, raise your hand, how many of you live entirely out of a garden and never go to a grocery store anymore? Well, looky there. Okay, well, that's a big problem, as you'll see in a moment. Okay, next slide, please. Well, over the next six years, the scientists from Oxford uh, University in England and London, England, these were people who were genetics experts. They poured through all that information and data, and in 2005, they published in the British Medical Journal, which is the equivalent of the Journal of the American Medical Association here, which is a very respectable medical journal, JAMA, they said in the British Medical Journal in January of 2005 that high blood pressure is not genetic. High blood pressure is not genetic. And so I want everybody on the count of three to yell hallelujah. One, two, three. Hallelujah! It's not genetic! Which means you can control it. You don't need permission from anybody. You can control it just by supplementing with the Mighty 90. And that's it! You learn how to take your own blood pressure, and it slowly goes away over a period of a month or two. I've had people who are on blood pressure medication for 40, 45 years, and in two weeks' time, they don't have high blood pressure anymore. They go back to a normal life. Men get sexier. They don't have that, you know, low T and ED and all the initial things. 